So we're going to get started right now with our questions. Uh, two things I want to bring up a little bit in advance. Um, we're going to be really mindful tonight to just use proper language for um, the anatomy. So the word vagina is usually used to describe everything of the female genitalia, but really today we're going to use words like labia, vulva, clitoris, because those are actually the proper words that should be used that can really have implications of uh, describing what feels pleasurable or describing something to a physician. So uh, yeah, let's get started with the questions. So we're going to uh, have it in three categories. The first category is what is the orgasm gap and why does it exist? So first question of what can it mean to have a good sexual experience and when is sex over with a partner? How could this be answered from an unscripted as well as scripted lenses? Scripted is as the movie showed the uh, you know man sort of pursues and there's sex involved there's intercourse he comes and sex is over um, and and his ejaculation is our focal point in sex education because we need to prevent pregnancy and those types of things and you know his ejaculation is presupposed of course it's going to happen that's why you need condoms there's no risk that happens with female orgasm, so it's not necessarily discussed in the risk-focused sexual education. So when you know a, a heterosexual couple will go forward with sex, and 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 then he has an ejaculation, that's every, everybody has been told that's when sex is over, okay. um, and it takes a little bit of effort to say actually that was great, but I'm not quite done yet, or that was great, or satisfaction is different than your orgasm. And like, let's be honest about how hard that is, too, because we'll allow sex to be over because we don't want to hurt someone's feelings, or... Passing out. Yeah, or, <laughs> or, or men, like, they, they, they carry around our orgasms, like, badges on their, like, yeah. Boy Scout. You know, it's that, so it's like, oh, yeah, we sure, you've given me five today, like, it, that's not even how that works. And, like, <laughs> Like, if I had five orgasms, you would know it. Like, it's not like the, oh, you have to ask me, guess kind of thing. And so I think it's, uh, you're right. No, nope, you're right. I see you shaking your head. And then you're right. You, I have different orgasms not different know intensities. It. You're right, because not every orgasm is like earth not all, shattering. All, you know, some are like little little sparklers and some are like fireworks. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But I also think that like it's not important for like us to tally like, okay, yes. well, one, two, three, four, five, there you go, good job. Like it's not a, I don't think it's a, <clears throat> a reward system. I like to tell patients, I said, there's no scoreboard at the end. There's nobody going on Twitter being like, one for me, <laughs> it is about, and the script is so powerful. I mean, that was just such a good reminder of how powerful the script is. We all think it, it's ingrained within us, but it takes a conversation between you and your partner. Guess what? A man does not need an erection to have an orgasm. And women do not need penetration to have an orgasm. Amen. I have lots of patients who can't get erections and I have lots of patients who can't have penetration. There's too much pain. They can still have all the pleasure. Okay. And so it's really important to communicate with your partner and there's no scoreboard at the end. Um, does anybody have something to discuss how it may be different um, in relation to queer women? Queer yeah, women? sure. I'll talk about that as a queer person. Um, I mean, I thought when I came out, um, I was in college and I thought that, um, you know, being with women would be like this amazing, wonderful experience because we all have the same parts. And so like, yes, this is gonna be great, I'm gonna orgasm every time, and like, no, because <laughs> not at all, not the case. Well, because it's crazy, you do see a lot of the same um, heterosexual scripts kind of playing out in, um, at least I did, in my queer relationships. Um, sometimes, you know, it's like, okay, well, one person kind of assumes the role of like the orgasm giver, and then the other person kind of assumes, <laughs> like, is the receiver, and, um, you know, when you're not in a great relationship where communication is like the focus, sometimes that can just be the end of it and your partner is left wanting in the same way, you know, heterosexual women are. So I think it's important for us to address the fact that like the orgasm gap does not like solely exist in the heterosexual sphere. There are queer women who, um, you know, don't orgasm when they're when they're having sex. Yeah. That's a good point that you actually made about, you know, uh, heterosexual couples. Um, how about when it comes to polyamorous? Does anybody 
have amazing stuff. So I'm the I'm the poly member. Um, <laughs> so I am very have a very lucky, a slightly different arrangement in which I am married, and I have a boyfriend, and I have a friend who is also a lover. And one of the things that I love is that everyone is different. It's not as though I have three copies of the same person, because that would really be kind of boring and pointless. Um, everyone is very different. The sex I have with each partner is extremely different and good in its own way and intense as it's in its own way and special in its own way. And, and actually, yes, there are definite different things. Like one of my partners tends to come before I do and then afterwards he's actually really, really good about saying, are you good? Are you good? Because like I can stimulate you other ways. And sometimes I'll be like, no, I'm not done yet. Yeah, you know, keep it coming. <laughs> I'm so not done. And um, I mean, that is a thing of communication. And that's also been a thing where I have grown because one of my partners I've been with for many, many, many years when I was like super duper immature and didn't know how to communicate. And so I have also learned over the years, you know, to, to change that, to get better at it. So I think that's one thing that I think we want all of you to know is that where you are today is not where you'll be tomorrow or next week or next year. And that that's inspiring. You know, just keep learning. Like there's, you can always just keep talking about stuff. And just because you have rules with one partner right now, you can change that. You know, you can start, you can, you know, you can change it. Can I just piggyback and say that like, there are, I think there are three like main questions you could be asking yourself to make sure that you're prioritizing pleasure when it comes to sex. And the first is, do you feel safe saying no? Does, that means like, do I feel safe both physically, but also emotionally and mentally? Like is my partner, I feel like my partner's gonna leave me or go have sex with someone else or step outside of, you know, whatever our established relationship is. Um, do you should feel safe saying no? Number two is, does sex end when my partner is finished, right? Because at the end of the day, sex should end when both partners are finished. And then the third is, does your pleasure matter as much as your partner's? For both of you. Um, and, and it should. And so those are kind of three questions that I like to walk my clients through when, when we're talking about how to prioritize your pleasure. Mm -hmm.